Good evening. It's wonderful to see everyone and a happy beginning of the holiday season. And it's wonderful, John and Chris, to have you join the uh, board of the Conservancy and Jane as well. How great. Uh, since our last time in uh, being together in a public board meeting, that it's been a lively summer and a great summer and some things I just want to walk you through. Uh, Jim, I want to just come back to your kind uh, question about membership. We're delighted that in the last few months, beginning with some research earlier on this winter, we've started a membership program, a supporters program for the Greenway Conservancy, and thank you so much for joining in. You and dozens of other uh, people who love the Greenway are now members and we have raised over $15,000 in the short period of time that Jody Wallen, the Director of Development, has launched us into a membership program. So that's a, a wonderful update. And so also is uh, everything that, by all accounts, is bringing hearts, minds, and tummies uh, to the Greenway as a place of beauty, absolutely, as a place of gathering, absolutely, and as a place that you can count on very interesting food on a daily basis. But you can also come for free public programs uh, that are collaborations with other wonderful groups, including the Boston Local Food Festival this, uh, this fall that the organizers said uh, brought over at somewhere between 35 and 40,000 people to the Greenway. Uh, if that, that may be a scotch more than we counted, but it's still a lot of people for a wonderful event. And then following on its heels, the food truck throwdown was a uh, food fight to the death with New York, and uh, New York trucks came to Boston, so our three best and their three best and I don't think the Dewey Square Park has ever hosted so many people. We had between uh, five and 10,000 people on one beautiful, oops, yes? 15 to 20, oh, even better, add a digit. <laughs> 15 to 20,000 people uh, in one beautiful day. We have now started, uh, as we have done over the last several years, to put a call for proposals out to local businesses that are interested in joining us in our Greenway Mobile Eats program. And we have, uh, we just received them last year. Jesse Brackenberry, uh, the Chief Operating Officer, is leading this program. And we have 34 uh, applications. It's very interesting, too, to see how the program has matured. If you look at the color bars, you'll see the popularity of food trucks really grow. And at the same time, bikes are something we never thought about when we began this program. And it's really been uh, a, it's paralleled a cross-section of more and more interesting food to eat while keeping it affordable and healthy and interesting. We would love to have you too uh, join with us again, as you may have uh, last year or the year before, in a public survey that we do this time of year for a four-week period where we ask the public, what did you like best and what would you like to see more of? And that's on Serving Monkey, at, right there on the uh, list, and we will post this uh, presentation, of course, on our website this week for everyone to hopefully take a minute and answer uh, about a dozen questions of what they love about our programs. And then we use that, Charlie McCabe, our Director of Public Programs, Jesse, uh, all of us, look at what is popular with the public, what they think might be missing, and that helps shape our public programming schedule for next spring uh, and on. But it's not spring yet, and, that, and yet it doesn't mean the Greenway is dark. In fact, uh, on this year's Winter Lights program, we have more and better programs in which we're collaborating with artists to take advantage of how many people 
use the Greenway on a daily basis or even on the way to holiday gatherings. And as we've done before, we have a number of programs that are sequenced throughout the holiday season and then in uh, March when we really need uh, something to come down with Greenway to celebrate. Uh, winter lights goes through the dark winter months. This coming Wednesday, you can see light waves open at the Boston Harbor Islands Pavilion. Uh, next week, we go to the North End to celebrate, as we have in the past, the annual lighting of the Great Elm Tree and some new lighting under the pergola. And then in January, at the Rings Fountain, we're working with the New American Public Art Group to uh, have the kind of uh, interactivity that we have talked about in the past but never had a partner that allowed us to pilot this. It's going to be great fun. Using your cell phone and guided uh, by uh, the artist guidelines, you'll be able to program the light blades yourselves. And uh, they have a uh, technical funnel program, that's a very high-tech word, that uh, you, your way of programming the light, bay, uh, light blades will be queued up and everyone will be able to see the impact that they've had on their green light. And then last but absolutely not least, uh, in March at, at the Dewey Square Park, one of the most imaginative winter lights art programs that we've had is going to reimagine the communities that were uh, in Dewey Square in the 1940s and 50s with uh, light tracings uh, as they uh, replicate the property lines uh, that were in that location. So uh, a little bit of future and a little bit of the past. We couldn't do what, we're, what we do with volunteers, but volunteers, like our programs, are ways to engage the public in shaping the future of the Greenway. And if you can see this extraordinary chart uh, on your left, you'll see how many, uh, in just this last year, how many new volunteers, uh, whether they are individuals or corporate and uh, neighborhood groups on the right have lent a hand with making this Greenway the beautiful place, the lively place that it is, and we thank them so much. Our volunteer program grows again for next year, and we'll be talking about that at our next public meeting. But this gives you some sense of uh, that, first of all, uh, it's just fun. There is no expertise needed. There, uh, we provide the gloves and the expertise in working with our horticulture staff, our professionals. It's a wonderful day in the park. And we began this year, uh, first annually, the National Public Lands Day that we hope will be a bigger and bigger volunteer event on the Greenway in years to come. We also, uh, besides working with individuals, as you'll see on the left, the, uh, a volunteer in Chinatown Park for the planting of thousands and thousands of mums, we also are very lucky in having a, a kind of partnership with Valley Crest uh, that they volunteered this year and volunteered not only manpower and expertise, but also their equipment to tackle one of the most uh, challenging uh, portions of the Greenway, Parcel 19, or right in front of the Intercontinental Hotel. Uh, that has been an area that's always been troubling because the amount of compaction uh, on that land. And while we haven't solved it this year, with Valley Crest we were able to add new uh, manholes and French drains leading to those manholes. And it did very well as an example through the big storms uh, that we had uh, last month. And we'll keep at it, but so far the uh, results have been fantastic and it cost the Conservancy nothing. Coming up, uh, or I'll go take a step back briefly, at our last annual meeting, we had presentations by experts on the Greenway's five-year strategy to bring more temporary and contemporary public art to the Greenway. 
uh, local artists, regional artists, national and international artists. And we announced then that we were going to launch an RFP process for two individual projects, Winter Lights for 2014-2015, and a Connections program that I'll get to in a second, which is the following year. With the New England Fund for the Arts as a sponsor and some other uh, private sponsors, we were able to uh, amass uh, the right kind of money to offer stipends for three selected artists to create proposals. And the deadline for submission was the end of last week, and extraordinarily, we have 70 proposals uh, from representing artists in 16 states and seven countries internationally. It's, it's, <laughs> we never thought that was possible, and we're just absolutely thrilled. We're also thrilled by the caliber of committee members who volunteered to sit with us to make some of the selections at preliminarily and then they will be ultimately uh, shown to the Boston Art Commission uh, with a recommendation for uh, one signature artwork for the Greenway. And then for Connection, the second uh, RFQ, which has the distinction of inviting artists to ask how you would unite the entire Greenway with art. Uh, we were just delighted to receive over a hundred submissions. There are actually so many that I can't tell you right now where they all come from, uh, but at our next public meeting we surely will and uh, let you know more about how that selection process is moving forward. And of course in both these cases, as the proposals move forward, there will be public meetings asking for input of neighbors and uh, abutters and tenants and the general public. So we're delighted. So, uh, just in sum, thank you for a most remarkable year and happy holidays to you and your family and peace on earth. <laughs>